Good day, Junior Techies. I'm Mrs. Brimaker. We're going to look at Activity 4, Fixed Assets and Financial Statements. The following information was taken from the records of Planet Traders with partner K. Moore and F. Ferdinand. The financial year ended 31 August 2022. It means if the accounting period ends 31 August 2022, it starts on the 1st of September 2021. Required, complete the asset disposal account on 1 December 2021. Complete the statement of comprehensive income for the year ended 31 August 2022. Prepare the following notes to the statement of financial position. So they've only asked you to complete the tangible assets on vehicles and trade and other receivables. Make sure that you go through the information presented. They provided you with an extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance on 31 August 2022. And then they provided you with adjustments. When you complete this question now in a test on an exam, they've asked you the statement of comprehensive income and then some of the notes to the balance sheet or statement of financial position. So if you are busy with your statement of comprehensive income and there are adjustments that needs to be done to the trade and other receivables, do it at exactly the same time so that you don't forget it. If you first focus on 4.1, then 4.2, and then 4.3, you might end up forgetting to take a figure to where it's supposed to go. So do it at exactly the same time. Question 4.1, complete the asset disposal account on 1 December 2021. Now at the same time, we are going to complete 4.3, notes to the statement of financial position, They've asked you to do fixed asset, the tangible asset mode, but only on vehicles. The fixed asset comprises of vehicles and equipment. The business has four identical vehicles which was purchased on the same date for the same cost. On 1 December, one of the old vehicles was traded in for a new vehicle. The transaction was not recorded, so we still need to show it. Details of the transaction are as follows. The cost of the new vehicle purchase is a question mark, which means we need to calculate it. The business still owed 236000 on the new vehicle after the trade-in value was received. Cost of the old vehicle traded in 150000 Accumulated depreciation on this vehicle on 1 September 2021, which is the beginning of the counting period, was 150,000. The trade in value received 14,000. Vehicles is depreciated at 20% per annum using the straight line method. Depreciation on equipment was calculated at 17,600. We're going to look now at vehicles specifically. Now, when we calculate depreciation, it's always calculated on the old, the new, plus that which we've sold. If we look at what have we sold, it's always from the beginning of the counting period until the day that we've sold it. On the new, it's from the day we purchased it until the end of the counting period and the old is always equal to 12 months. So this is the extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance. My total vehicles is 600,000 and the accumulated depreciation on vehicles is 520,000. Because they told us these transactions have not yet been recorded, it means that the balances from the pre-adjustment trial balance will be my opening balances. So that's my starting point. Then we're going to look now at the vehicle that we've disposed of. They said it was disposed on the 1st of December, which means that depreciation must be calculated on the asset which we sold from the beginning of the accounting period 
until the day that we've sold it, which is December. So that means it's equal to three months because it was on the 1st of December. We don't include that month. Now, when we look at the steps of asset disposal, we can first start with updating the depreciation or we can start by taking out the cost. Now, we've got four identical vehicles, 600,000 divided by four, but you don't need to take 600,000 divided by four because they provided you with the cost of the old vehicle, which was traded in 150,000. So step number one now is take out the cost where to to asset disposal. To get the accumulated depreciation on the asset which we've disposed of in the beginning, yes, it was given to you 150,000, but if you were to calculate it, let's say they haven't provided it to you, because it's four identical vehicles, which was purchased on exactly the same date, it means we could have taken the 520,000 divided by four. That is 150,000. But now to update our depreciation. Vehicles is depreciated 20% per annum using straight line method, which means we need to use cost. The cost is 150,000 times 20% times 3 divided by 12 means my depreciation is 7,500. Now, the third step, once we've updated our depreciation, accumulated depreciation on vehicles is credited and depreciation will be debited. To take out the total accumulated depreciation, Accumulated depreciation on vehicles will be debited, account credited, asset disposal. Step number four, record the selling price. So they said the trade in value received was 14,000. Cost minus total accumulated depreciation equals the book value. And that is the amount that will appear in your tangible asset note. If we sold it for more than the book value, it means that we've made a profit. If we sell it for less, it means that we've made a loss. So if I balance this account, you would see that the credit side is more than the debit side. Therefore, the balancing figure will appear on the debit side, which means made a profit. Alternatively, like I said in the beginning, if we sold it for more, then the book value, it means we've made a profit and the difference is 1,500. Our next step is to calculate on the new. Now, it was traded in, which means we need to, from the 1st of December until the end of the accounting period, which is nine months, we need to calculate the depreciation on the new. But we need to use the cost, but now we don't know what is the cost. We need to calculate that. So, if it's traded in, asset disposal is credited and creditors control is going to be debited. We still owed 236000 on the new vehicle after the trading value was received. So, to find out the cost, if we still owe 236000 we're going to add that to the 14000 to find out what was the cost of the new. Then we can calculate the depreciation 20% for nine months, and that equals my depreciation on the new. To show the depreciation on the new, depreciation will be debited and accumulated depreciation will be credited. But now, because we've calculated it the new until the end of the accounting period, we are going to add the new to the old or the remaining. Calculating now on the cost, remember that 600,000 includes the asset which we disposed of. We had four and we got rid of one of them. So there's only three left over. So you can take 600,000 divided by three, 
apologies, you must take 600,000 minus 150,000 equals 450,000. That 450,000 is equivalent to three vehicles. So if you divide it by three, it equals 150,000, which is the cost of each. So you could have also said to find the old 150,000 times three. That equals 450,000. Now, if you times that by 20%, it means my depreciation will be 90,000. Now, if you add 90,000 to the accumulated depreciation on vehicles, your accumulated depreciation will be 480,000. That is more than the cost of 450,000. So when this happens, we need to get the carrying value or the book value. So 450,000 minus 390,000 equals 60,000 minus three. Why am I minusing it by three? Because we've got three vehicles left over. That equals the depreciation for this year. Alternatively, if you take 150,000 minus 150,000, it equals 20,000. 20,000 minus one is 19,999. And how many vehicles is left over? Three, it gives you exactly the same answer. The total depreciation on the old plus the new is the 37,500 plus the 59,997. Account credited, accumulated depreciation on vehicles, account debited depreciation. The depreciation on equipment was calculated at 17,600, so we're going to add it to the depreciation account. Remember, depreciation is an expense which will appear in your statement of comprehensive income. What is your total depreciation for this accounting period? When completing this now in 4.1 and 4.3, we start with the balances from the pre-adjustment trial balance. Because none of this has been recorded, it means that will be the balance in the beginning, your cost, and accumulate 520,000. Now immediately calculate the carrying value in the beginning. Cost minus accumulate equals the carrying value. And all of this is equivalent to four vehicles. We traded one of them in, which means asset disposal will be debited. Make sure that you get the dates correct. It's December the 1st, 2021. Account credited, accumulated depreciation on vehicles. This includes the balance in the beginning plus the updated, the depreciation which we've calculated. Cost minus accumulate equals your book value and that is the amount which appears in your tangible asset note. We traded it in, the trading value, that which they gave us, was 14,000 because it was traded in. Your details is creditors control. Now we can calculate the profit on the sale of an asset, 1,500, and that is the amount which will appear in your statement of comprehensive income. Do not forget to take it to the statement of comprehensive income as part of your operating income. We calculated the addition at cost by adding the 236,000 which we still owed to the 14,000 additions 250,000. The depreciation on the new was calculated for nine months on the old because if we calculated our depreciation on the cost at 20%, it would have exceed the accumulated depreciation, would have exceed the cost. That's why we have to take the book value, 
which is 60,000 minus three, because there's three vehicles left over. And that equals my depreciation at the end. This is just a reminder. So the total depreciation is the old plus the new, and it must be shown in brackets. Next, we can calculate our total movement by adding additions minus disposal minus depreciation. To get the carrying value at the end, we take the carrying value in the beginning plus additions because, sorry, not additions, plus movement because there's no brackets. To get the cost at the end, it's my cost in the beginning plus additions minus the cost on the asset which I've disposed of. That equals the cost at the end. In this question, if you had three vehicles left over at 150,000 per cost, which means it's the 450,000 plus the 250,000, that equals your 700,000. Accumulated depreciation, you can now either take the cost minus the carrying value at the end, or if you take accumulate in the beginning minus the total accumulated depreciation on the asset which I've disposed of plus the depreciation, it equals the accumulated depreciation at the end. Question 4.2, statement of comprehensive income for the year ended 31 August 2022. In the pre-adjustment trial balance, they provided us with the balance sheet account section. Remember that the balance sheet account section appears in your balance sheet or statement of financial position. Everything in the nominal account section must go to your statement of comprehensive income. Now, take note on the answer booklet. They've already provided the figures from the pre-adjustment trial balance for you. So do not go and change those figures on the answer booklet. Sales was a question mark and then they provided cost of sales. So it means we need to find out what is sales. If we look at the first adjustment, the business held discounted cash sales during the year to clear old stock. The total of trade discount given to customers was 189500 the business maintains a markup of 100% on cost. So first, it's important for you to understand when there's trade discount, we never show the trade discount amount. You need to know there's a difference between trade discount, discount allowed, discount received. If we look at discount allowed, discount received, it's discount given for early settlement of account, which means we need to show that discount. Discount allowed is an expense to the business. Discount received is regarded as an income. But when we look at trade discount, trade discount means paid less, and we never show the trade discount. And this is one of the reasons why a business does not achieve the aimed markup. So we need to now calculate our sales and they provided the cost of sales to us. To calculate this, we need to take the cost and we first work out what was the sales amount by using the markup percentage. 950,000 times 200 divided by 100, that equals my sales, but then we need to subtract the trade discount to get the sales figure. Please make sure that you understand this. Know how to calculate cost of sales if trade discount was given. Refer back to the chapter on adjustments which we've done. Adjustment number two, a credit note for 1,800 was issued to be now a debtor for an overcharge to services rendered. If you see the word services rendered, it means that fee income or another word that we use is current income is involved. 
They provided the term fee income. So this has nothing to do with your sales. It has to do with debtors and fee income. A credit note means we needed to credit the debtors account. We start with the balance from the pre-adjustment trial balance. Now remember, they've asked you to complete trade and other receivables. Debtors control appears in trade and other receivables. And secondly, if they didn't ask you to complete trade and other receivables, it's always a good idea. It's actually a must. You need to know what is the balance of your debtors control. Because if they've asked you to calculate provision for bad debts on your book debt, book debt means the balance of your debtors control. And then you need to take into, con into consideration any adjustment to that account, any adjustments that was made. So we start with the balance from the pre-adjustment trial balance. Credit note means we need to credit the account with 1,800. Account which will be debited is fee income. If fee income is debited, it means we need to minus 1,800. Make sure that you show your calculations. There were no other adjustments with fee income, so we can immediately total it. Third adjustment, received 3,620 from Ross to pay his long overdue account. The amount was entered in the cash receipts journal in the debtors control column. It appeared, however, that this account has previously been written off. When you see this type of adjustment, you should immediately know and realize. But if this account was written off, it means this is bad debts recovered. We should never have shown it in the debtors control account. Because now, if we show it in our debtors control and our debtors control is credited, it means that we're showing that balance is going to decrease because we've received money from a data. But this person is no longer a data to the business. Do not write this as bad debts, your expense, bad debts is going to decrease. We need to know what was the bad debts recovered. So to correct this, it means debtors control will need to be debited. And by debiting that, it will be plus to the balance from the pre-adjustment trial balance. Debtors control is debited so that bad debts recovered can be credited and that is an income to the business. Outstanding debts totaling 6,450 must be written off. The provision for bad debts must then be adjusted to 8% of the book debt. So this is what makes this a little bit challenging because if you did not consider the fee income or the bad debts recovered, it means you would have calculated your provision for bad debts incorrectly. It's 8% of the book debt, so you need to know what is your new total. But before you can calculate that, you first need to show outstanding debts totaling 6,450. It means debtors control will be credited and bad debts will be debited, which means we need to add 6,450 to the bad debts. Now we can calculate the provision for bad debts. Our new balance is 270,000 times 8%. Provision for bad debts must be adjusted to 21,600. This is your new balance for provision for bad debts. Please do not indicate that as part of your operating income or operating expenses. We need to adjust our provision for bad debts and make this our new provision for bad debts. So what was the old provision for bad debts? Your provision for bad debts had a balance from the pre-adjustment trial balance 16,675. It must now be increased, adjusted to 
21,600. So as soon as we increase the provision for bad debts, that will be regarded as an operating expense. Provision for bad debts adjustment, 4,925. Make sure that you show your calculations in brackets. Alternatively, on your answer booklet, you can draw a T account. We do mark that as your calculations. The bank statement was received after the trial balance had been drawn up. The following items have not been entered. Bank charges, including the levy on credit card transaction, 571. So bank charges is an expense to the business, which means that we will add 571. Amount received from Discovery Bank, 52,100. This was in respect of the fixed deposit which matured plus interest. Interest on fixed deposit is capitalized. Now, what does capitalized mean? It means it's added to the fixed deposit account. The fixed deposit from Discovery Bank from the pre-adjustment trial balance had a balance of 50,000. So if 52,100 was paid into our bank account, it means that fixed deposit Discovery Bank would have been credited because it matured plus the interest, so the interest is included into that, means that our bank account would have been debited and this includes the interest. Now we want to know what was the interest on that investment. So if we take 52,100 minus 50,000, it means that the interest was 2,100. Interest on fixed deposit forms part of interest income. Make sure that you show your calculation in brackets, 52,100 minus 50,000. That equals the total interest. There were no other interest. The next adjustment, insurance included an amount of 2160 for the period 1 January 2022 to 31 December 2022. That falls outside of my accounting period. Remember, my accounting period ends 31 August 2022. Now, anything that falls outside of our accounting period must be taken out. Please do not take this figure, insurance, 18,790, and then adjust that figure. It is included into that total, an amount of 2,116. This is the amount that we need to work with. Now, if one January 231 December means that we've paid for this for 12 months. Our accounting period ends August, which means four months must be taken out if we count September, October, November, December. This means 2160 times four divided by 12, 720 must be taken out of insurance. Our total for insurance, this is our expense for this accounting period. Remember, you were supposed to do the trade and other receivables. Insurance is going to be credited, account debited, prepaid expense. And prepaid expense forms part of your trade and other receivables. So earlier, when we started this question, I said, do it at exactly the same time. Complete the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income. And if there's any adjustment that you need to make to the notes, make it immediately that you don't forget it. A reminder, we had to calculate the total depreciation for this accounting period in question 4.1, 4.3. The depreciation is part of our operating expenses, please ensure that you show the old, the new, plus that which we've sold with regards to vehicles, and then they provided you with the total depreciation on your equipment. You didn't need to calculate that. 
the profit on the sale of the asset forms part of your operating income, 1,500. The gross sal salary of one of the employees was understated by 3,500. So understated means too little. We need to add to that figure. His pension deduction is calculated at 8% of his gross salary. The employer contributes 3 rand for every 1 rand paid by the employee towards the pension. The necessary adjustment needs to be made. So this is asked slightly different. What we need to do is when we're doing statement of comprehensive income, I only care about the gross plus the contributions because that is an expense to the business. So first we need to add the 3,500 because it was understated by that amount. Doesn't mean that the salary of the employee was omitted completely. It's just understated by 3,500, which means 3,500 must be added to your salaries and wages. But now the pension fund also needs to be adjusted. The employer contributes free rent for every one rent paid by the employee towards the pension. So 8% of 3,500 is 280, and then we need to times that by three because that is the contribution by the business, the employer. So your salaries and wages will be plus 3,500. Make sure that you get the pluses and the minuses correct. And employer's contributions will be plus 840. So your total is 36,540. Interest on loan must be calculated at 15% per year. Provide for outstanding interest. Interest is capitalized. The balance from the pre-adjustment trial balance is 33,000. It says interest on loan must be calculated at 15%, which means we have to take the mortgage bond 240,000 times 15%. They said provide for outstanding interest. So we don't know if it was one month or two months or how many months. This is why we need to find out what is our total interest for this accounting period. That is our final amount. Why do we show it as our final in interest expense? Because there were no other interest in this activity or in this question. So you can immediately write that 36,000 as your final figure. So the outstanding interest was 3,000. Now, because interest is capitalized, it's added to the loan account, which means your mortgage loan would have been credited. Then a physical stock take on 31 August 2022 revealed the following. Stock to the value of 10,300 could not be accounted for. So it was given to you slightly different than what you are used to. Here they didn't say this is the amount of stock which is left over. And now you need to calculate if there's a deficit or surplus. They said to you, stock to the value of 10,300 could not be accounted for. That is your trading stock deficit 10,300. Then be very careful. It says stationary used 27,350. That is the amount that you've used which then is your final figure as your expense. The difference will go to consumables on hand which was not related in this question. They didn't ask you to do the note number four inventories or complete the statement of financial position. I only care about what was our total expense for this accounting period. The monthly rent income did not change during the year. During August 2022, the tenant paid 8,700 for repairs to the premises and deducted this from his rent for August. Repairs are the responsibility of the business 
and this was not recorded. The rent for September 2022 was received in advance. Now, this is important to understand that rent income, 147300 was rent that we've received, but the tenant paid 8700 for repairs to the premises and he deducted it from the rent of August. Repairs are the responsibility of the business, which means we need to show that 8700 as repairs and maintenance, which is an expense to us. So our step number one here is to find out the total rent per month which means that I need to add that 8,700 to the 147,300. So the total rent income is 156,000, which includes the rent that he paid for September. So to find out the monthly rent, we need to divide it by 13 because one month was received in advance, which means now, 8,700 will be added to our repairs and maintenance. That is our expense, so we need to show it as our expense. Then we're going to add 8,700 to the amount from the pre-adjustment trial balance. It is that 156,000. And again, why do we add it? We want to find out the total monthly rent. The tenant deducted the repairs, but it's the business responsibility. So 156,000 divided by 13 means 12,000 must be deducted because that was rent received in advance. Now that we've done all the adjustments, we can finish off the statement of comprehensive income. That is our last step. So if we start with the sales minus cost of sales, it equals my gross profit. Then we need to add all our operating income, gross profit plus op operating income equals gross operating income. Now our next step is to add all our operating expenses, but take note, there are still blank spaces. That means there were no adjustments to those figures that were provided to you on the answer booklet. So we're going to just simply close that bracket. Repairs and maintenance, there was an adjustment. We had to add 8,700. Once we filled all those spaces, we can add the total operating expenses. Make sure that it is in bracket because we need to subtract it. From what? Gross operating income minus operating expenses equals operating profit plus interest income equals operating profit before interest expense minus interest expense equals your net profit. You would have done this at the same time while you're completing the statement of comprehensive income we are now going to complete the trade and other receivables, the debtors control. Make sure that you show your calculations in brackets. We started with the balance in the beginning plus bad debts recovered minus the fee income minus the bad debts equals our new balance, 270000 My provision for bad debts, our new balance for provision for bad debts is 21,600, that must be shown in brackets. Trade debtors minus provision for bad debts equals the net trade debtors. Then we had prepaid expense, the insurance, which was paid in advance, 720. So our total for trade and other receivables is your net trade debtors plus the prepaid expense. This is new for grade 11s. Make sure that you understand the trade and other receivables with the provision for bad debts. 
Thank you very much. Next, we're going to look at activity five. Success does not come overnight. It is a sum of repeated small efforts. Have a wonderful day.